Hi, everyone, and welcome to LA Phone Home. This is a bi weekly series hosted by the amazing LA radio station Dub Lab in partnership with Vans Channel 66. We're here live from the Vans store in downtown LA. This series, in partnership with Dub Lab, happens every second and fourth Thursday right here on Vans Channel 66, where we have a bunch of great DJs, performers, community organizers, and other inspiring folks. My name is Vivian. I'm a DJ and producer, I go by Star Eyes, and I am super excited to be here with my friends who also happen to run one of America's most exciting record labels right now, and a super genre-defying selection of music. This is John, aka Trickfinger, and Aura, T09, aka Marcy, you will hear me call them by those names interchangeably. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Ever Records for those of you who are maybe tuned in for the first time and haven't check out, checked out their band camp or checked out all the sick music they're putting out. And then um, Aura is going to DJ some very sick deep cuts for the following hour and a half. So um, without further ado, welcome to the Ever Records show. How are you guys? Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so as like a fan of the label and somebody who plays your tunes, um, I definitely was wondering a little bit about when the label started and what were the kind of conversations that you guys were having kind of while you were baking this idea of doing a record label in your mind? Well, uh, uh, I guess the idea started about two years ago, and um, we were, we were, we were. She, Marcy's been such a big part of the rape scene here in LA. Has been such a big part of her sure. life, and and uh, and those have been my friends also for the last you know twelve, thirteen years or so. So we're just in this world, and we just felt like we had the ability to start a label and have a place where uh, we wouldn't have to worry about um, how, how the industry's set up and how uh, what kind of genres people are trendy with people right now or anything and and put out music by people that we like who don't let um, who don't let genre or trends influence what they do but who draw different aspects from different types of musics that they feel that make them want to say something themselves uh i think it was also about um like we were discussing like the temporalness of the rave scene in the rave community and also like having a a place for john's electronic music to kind of have a a community centered around that that was less temporal than than um than just parties themselves also because John is more of like as far as the electronic music side of uh, your work it's more um, stuff that he does at home it's not as much performance based so this was a way to have community for that um, and have it kind of have a, a physical take a physical form like I, I, I and also like when you when you work with labels like like Planet Muse slash Time Sig put out um, recent record by me but uh you have to fit into their schedules like having your own label is is a way that a you can just show. put something out whenever you want you know rather than like two years after you made the music or whatever yeah you know? i love this thing that you said about creating community too because i think when you're a music fan and you kind of fall in love with a certain label you're falling in love with like a whole world that that label has created like it's almost like characters and you know a comic book or something where you're falling in love with the aesthetic and the kind of the apex point of all of the music that's coming out on that label just like appeals to your sort of vibration if yeah. you will yeah. um i was kind of wondering about some of you know there's definitely every kind of every kind of electronic genre in the mix in ever records but i was wondering about the venn diagram of you guys and kind of some of your like influences either musically or just like aesthetically or spiritually like what are some things that are in the venn diagram of your things that you like or things that you you know tap into yeah, I feel like for me, musically, the Venn diagram is like pretty, pretty big. Um, and so 
I think, oh, I guess overlapping John and I. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, lot, there's a lot of stuff. We have actually we've shown each other so much different electronic music throughout the years as friends um, and from John coming to my shows and things like that um, I actually met John through his musical partner Venetian Snares is how we met and so there's that whole world yeah Marcy was a breakcore girl when I first <laughs> knew her so that's she wanted to jump around to breakcore that was pretty I mean, much her whole life really. yeah. Yeah. a lot of people don't but we do we all do yeah so breakcore is in the Venn diagram and then I would also say John actually introduced me to trance which is my whole thing oh wow now. I didn't yeah. John I didn't know that that was you that that, uh, yeah, yeah. Open the trans portal. John showed me Comakino, yeah. and then I went on a whole journey of that, and now it's super essential to my um, D- DJing and all of our music. So, trance and breakcore is in the Venn diagram. IDM is in the Venn diagram. It Apex was not popular twin. to say you like trance back in that breakcore crowd. <laughs> no, but, but but I was, I had a few beers, and I, I you know. I feel like a trance is the thing that a lot most people secretly like, but they can't necessarily admit it in certain circles. Well, now circles. you can admit it. On this note, though, <laughs> I mean, you completely nailed this beautiful, euphoric 90s trance sound on your um, Ever Sweet. Records release with Booty. I was listening to it in the car, and it was like really helping me Um, (laughs) navigate this traffic but i can't believe that that's something that is so new to you because that record like you obviously grasped the feeling of it so new well well, sort of more like 10 10 or 12 years (laughs) new but newish still definitely not something i was listening to in in high school i was listening to drum and bass and i had um someone had given me an aphex twin drux cd but it didn't have the writing on it and i didn't know what it was so i was just listening to that every day of 11th grade not knowing what it was but that's definitely a but we're both really into into, into jungle and stuff from the 90s and and uh we both like electro a lot we both like (laughs) I like showed John burial footwork. and yeah. footwork, yeah. which he fell in love with. Yeah, yeah. Marcy used to always send me music for, of of different things, so there would be certain things that I'd like gravitate towards because she sent way more music than anybody could ever <laughs> listen to in one lifetime. And and, and, uh, and yeah, DJ Rashad was something I immediately responded to, which was something that she was into. Ahead of the pack for sure. Like uh, footwork was still just known inside Chicago, and and Marcy knew all about it. So, like, um, so yeah. So so uh, yeah. We we have we have a lot. You know, we both we both like the '80s freestyle, freestyle a lot. Like definitely. You know, <laughs> Yeah. No wonder we're friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I'm glad you just named all those genres because even though Ever Records is a genre defying label, you will find mixes of all of these things that you just mentioned within all the different releases, which all kind of have so much personality. You know, I, I feel like they're very reflective of the artist that's putting them out and kind of like, you know, with the, the latest Killborn release, you get so much of Ashes spirit in there and like same thing with Pete Devnall which will be coming out soon you know it's like the essence of these people even more than it is about what tempo is this or what you know style is yeah this. we were we were talking about this in the car actually that that we were like well is it actually okay to say that we're not part of any genre but what we realized is is that when things are when when things are kind of new maybe even at like the beginning of jungle or something they're pulling from other genres that are already are established so so at that beginning point you would maybe speak to something and say oh that's like a such and such and such and such hybrid but if you're doing that enough then eventually like something new might come out of that that ends up becoming a genre in and of itself so what we were looking for in the artists that we like is that that people who are putting a a lot of themselves into it where they're not they're not aiming to be a part of a particular scene or a particular sound but they're aiming to express themselves and from whatever uh, sources inspire them and so yeah I think that that is really uh, key to, to the music that we're selecting and I'm glad that you noticed that as well because I feel that way too about Pete and Ash and and uh, Wheezy and CZ and um, and Sam 23's release is 
is like that as well. Yeah, it's cool when, when artists have certain songs that are outliers. You know, even in history, it's cool. Sometimes there's like a jungle record where, where one song sounds just like a prototype of what you now know jungle to be. Right. And, but there's another song that like doesn't sound like anything but that one song because it just happened in 91 or 92 and it's just some weird outlier thing that but they were all drawing from you know american hip-hop and and drawing from like uh you know hardcore and stuff like that and it was just and it and so sometimes you mix up a style in a way that later people go that's the that's the that's the blueprint of how to do that style but but uh it's cool whether it's going to catch on or not that you have different tunes that seem to combine different styles in different ways and you know yeah we were talking about that idea before there's a scene that coalesces that you can say oh this is this scene and they wear these clothes and the music sounds like this that i that point right beforehand where people are experimenting and nobody's really come and slapped a label on it and yeah. done the article about the scene where like that's the best part of every scene before anyone really knows what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. It's it's just a thing that we like in music and art in general for people to be drawing from whatever helps them to say whatever it is that they've got to say. Because in the end, what really matters is the the uh, the character and the soul of the person making the music. I've never heard any two musicians sound alike in any genre, but when, the more people try to sound like each other, the less I'm interested in that. I'm interested in more in people who sound like themselves and are com drawing from different musical styles that turn them on in a way that, that, uh, that gives them the opportunity to say what they want to say. You know? On that note, yeah. John, I wanted to ask you about your project Speed Dealer Moms mm -hmm. with Venetian Snares. Um, so one thing I love is that the track titles on the most recent EP are just the date that you made them and then how many... I guess how many sessions or how many takes you did to make the songs? It, it's been written that it's sort of like like we in we've always named them different. You know, I think at our first session, Aaron was naming the tracks and he was naming them like like March six, eighteen seventy nine, and, and he was naming like he was just doing random dates from all throughout history. You know, so so that was how we started, and then um, and. At whatever session, whichever one of us was doing the recording, the final recording part of it all, uh, we, it was our job to name the file, so we just name it whatever we thought. At that particular session, we did, we did two, well, okay, it's from three sessions, but like the April ones were, were because it was, it was April, and we did, we did two tracks during that session, so I called the first song April 1, and I called the second song April 2, and then they had a number in back of it, which was just what take we had gotten that it on. So, the, so it's it's the month, but it's not the date. I don't know how it's, how far there's apart still those an element of mystery there date. to like, what this is. Yeah. How did you? I mean, how did you set up this collaboration? Because you've done. I mean, you've been collaborating with Aaron, who's Venetian Snares for over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people know you for your guitar work, but you've done so many collaborations like and so much electronic focused music like in different forms whether solo, whether with other people. Like how did you set that up with Aaron? Who did what and what were the conversations you guys are having about oh, what what are we going to make? What are we going to do? Oh, who well, are the we, speed dealer moms? You know, it, <laughs> When it started, we were just two friends hanging out, uh, sort of going on vacation at each other's houses, and it never really has really changed from that. We, you know, we'll, we'll live together for a couple of weeks while the other one is visiting, and we make music, and we never saw it, it like it was only over time that we started going, we're a band, you know, <laughs> like like me and him, and particularly our friend Chris, we're just like we're. We're a band. What you you know? And so we were on the lookout for a name, and we had a conversation that that uh, some of the people I grew up with, some of the girls are now speed dealer moms, and it was just a, <laughs> a rumor that I had heard. There are people who have children who also deal speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we just thought, you know, I think 
su- such a big part of our philosophy was um, was the concept of remaining pure from outside influence, pure from that we weren't affected by what an audience might think. We didn't let that didn't, never entered our head, which with most people that's in their head, like in the forefront all the time. And with this collaboration, neither of us was ever thinking about what our music might sound like to other people. And we weren't thinking about how we would fit into any label or how we would release the music. Some, a lot of our music is like, the songs are like real concise and orderly, but like a half hour long. They still sound composed, but they're long, like too long to put on a vinyl record. So we would just, none of that stuff was on our mind. And, and uh, so to have a name that sort of symbolizes the lack of purity just seemed funny to us, you know, like... I don't know. We'll have to go ask the Marvista Speed Dealer moms about the purity. Yeah. I'm sure they have something to say on it. Um, I mean, I love... I think that's like a real luxury in this day and age to be able to make music without thinking about its final destination or the branding of it and like be able to just separate yourself from that in in a like even for five minutes, you know? I think a lot of people can't do that. Um, you, Marcy, you mentioned before about CZ and Wheezy, and we were talking about Kilborn and some of the other people on the label. And, you know, there's people from all over, but it really does have a strong base in North America. Yeah. And if people are living in LA and you've been to an Ever Records party, then you know that there's definitely a very strong crew forming here around that. Um, I kind of was wondering, you know, being in L.A. as this label ever records, like what influence has the city had on you both? You've lived here like almost your whole life. (laughs) Um, And, you know, like what what is this label bringing to L.A. specifically? Because it's not like running this label in London, say, or Berlin or somewhere else other than this place. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think for me the the experiences at the shows that I have been putting on has really shaped kind of my uh, taste and and also my awareness of Los Angeles and how we fit in in the global community, which is sometimes we have a hard time finding our our place in that. Uh, the dominant music here is not electronic music. It's much more hip hop or slow or, or even things that are electronic end up uh, being more derived from that side of things like uh, the beat scene, um, which is all amazing stuff, uh, but definitely techno and, and, and harder, faster, stuff is is much more predominant in Europe and so it's nice for us to try to have like a stronghold of that here in the city and um, to to again to try to create that community here is really the objective and so it's amazing that we have so many producers here that are so talented and and really do uh, I mean, you'll you'll see Wheezy's tracks being played by Ben Clock, you know, in in Europe at major festivals, and same for uh, same for other people on our artists. Uh, I mean, other people on our label, and I just feel like there's a lot to draw from here. Um, I guess, like inspiration-wise, LA has always had a really fun kind of take on rave that I think is different from other places, you know? I think, like, the L.A. raves were always, like, really colorful. And, like, I know you were you were an L.A. raver, so you know... Just nodding in agreement. Yeah, yeah. So, so trying to bring some of that kind of spirit to everything that we do. Um, and definitely we are focusing on North American artists, for sure, um, just because we feel like they're the ones who need assistance. <laughs> Um, and need a place, need a place to express themselves. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like it's sometimes an uphill battle being well, every- in North America and the States in particular and making electronic music. Yeah. You don't necessarily have all the resources available to you, and it's not that easy to go play somewhere else. Like, another country isn't an easy jet $1 yeah. flight yeah. away. And so, like, and we're a huge country, so it's been you know, always an uphill battle for us to kind of get together and have that community, even with one, even within one city, like a city like LA is huge. And so can get so splintered into the different scenes. But I do feel like, 
you know, that dose of fun and that also kind of referencing, I mean, go to an Ever Records party and just see Marcy's laser for one thing. Marcy has the bomb laser. <laughs> the or lasers, the laser. I should say. The laser um, is an artist on our label. Yeah, I mean, just kind of like not being afraid to bring some of the fun into it and kind of push the tempos as well. I, I feel like it does feel like a new a new iteration or a new thing or a return maybe even yeah i'm always i'm I, i'm always interested because in the same way that the label is intended to be multi-genre the parties themselves are also intended to be multi-genre and i love it's the same in, in a multi-genre dj set you know you may go from one completely different vibe all the way to something else and that it's a progression and that transition that's really of interest and so i feel like i, I we try really hard to tap into other scenes that are happening in Los Angeles themselves and bring those people in, invite them in and be like, oh, there's these like there's these hardcore kids that they're just like railing intense music. And I'm like, that would be a perfect like climactic moment to our party, even though the whole thing isn't going to necessarily be that we're pull from the different the kind of this fractured scenes and try to try to be a bit of the gel. That's the that's the hope, at least. But like you said, um, Existing within that within the United States is so funny because sometimes we'll be like, yeah, we've got a really great thing going. And then your main person is like, I'm moving to Berlin. And you're like, wait, come back. <laughs> like, stay like, with us. Here. Yeah. I, so uh, I've thought about I that a lot. I did move to Berlin temporarily and I moved back. So. <laughs> right, because somebody, you've got to be like the party that you want to see in the world or the yeah. label that you want to see in the world. And there is such a... You know, there is such a, like a beauty to staying in the place that you're from and just really trying to put your mark on. So glad to have you back, scene. by the way. Oh, it's great to be back. <laughs> so, yeah, I recently moved back here from New York. I'm an L.A. native, grew up in the warehouses of downtown L.A., San Bernardino and Lancaster, many points <laughs> beyond. Um, but, yeah, one of my, like, concerns of moving back here was, like, where, where do I find my people and where do I find this this particular energy? Um, and what you're saying about, you know, pulling DJs and performers from different scenes and artists from all these different scenes and tempos, it really feels to me like when you walk through a five room rave and you're like, okay, I need to go to this room now and get like the trance energy or whatever. And then I need to go to like the break core room and just, you know, headbang or whatever. And that feeling of the time when all the, the parties were all together and there wasn't so much like you you were experiencing all of that music like i really feel like it's about the tapping into the energy more so of or the feeling of some kind of music more tapping so into than the like spirit rather than yeah. the particular sound yeah follow follow the spirit we always talk about that um before we get into your dj set i definitely want to talk about the aesthetics of ever records and also let people know about this crazy <laughs> app that you have um, maybe first of all just tell people about the app and like where they can get it and what they can do with it yeah so so we were just the, one of the things I guess we missed in our Venn diagram discussion was just like um, our artistic Venn diagram and uh, for me in particular I've always been really interested in like tech the intersection with technology and art and um, and so when we decided to do our covers and John has always has like whenever we've, we've listened to records together he's he's always like showing me the cover and he's really interested in like the look and the feel and 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 how the visual elements relate to the music and so we wanted to do something special with the visuals for for our label and um i had a i have a friend mookie who did this art project um she made these postcards that 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 were activated by this app and um and I had them on our fridge, and anytime anyone would come over, we would just like, I would show them this crazy thing would come out of your phone just from looking at her piece of art. And so we worked together with her to build a similar thing for our label. So essentially, what it is, is it's an augmented reality app that you can get on the app store and i think it's also now i just got an email that it's available on android and google phones as well 
Um, but essentially, you don't. It's like a QR code, but without having to have the visual of the QR code. It could be any image or any graphic. Uh, so you can actually scan the cover of all of the records. Um, sometimes there's a, a something hidden, secret on the label of the vinyl as well. All of our stickers have these like augmented reality experiences that happen when you when you download the app and you scan them, and it's it's pretty fun to play with. Yeah, so you, you hold your phone up to it, and there's extra artwork that's there that's, that, doesn't, that you can't see until you hold your phone up to it. And there's also music on there, like uh, on the Speed Dealer Moms one, there's, there's a loop of like 30 seconds that's the beginning of a take that we didn't release of, of one of the tunes that had a weird beginning that wasn't anywhere else. So, so yeah, you and you know when Snoop Dogg does it, you get <laughs> messages from him. You know, that was the only person we knew of who had used it. I think it's on a, he does it on like a Hennessy bottle or something, and right. then the bottle like talks to you. Yeah, so you yeah. can put secret <laughs> messages to your fans or whatever. But in our case, we have little musical tidbits and and moving art that's that that's uh, triggered by the phone seeing the record. Yeah. Yeah, I let. I mean. Also, first, like, you're creating cult items. So yeah. everyone, like, if you go to an Ever Records show or, you know, you order a record on the band camp. We also scan our clothes. Oh, I didn't know about yeah. the clothes, too. Yeah. Damn. So <laughs> if you get some Ever Records stuff in your hands, then you can kind of tap into to some secret mysteries and some clues and like some stuff that nobody knows about. Maybe eventually we'll use it for like our map point or something I thought would be a fun, like scan Evar001 to find the location of the rave. <laughs> like, it pops up with a map. It's like a 3D, we could actually a 3D do that. rendering yeah. of the warehouse. Here's the warehouse, <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> wow, I mean, I love that idea too because like, you know, electronic music is so based on technology and moves kind of at the speed of technology and the different things that you can do and the ways that you can misuse it and use it and combine it and you know that's kind of been the history of it all along and it's nice to see you guys using these like strange new technologies like yeah. kind of but also having the mystery of the whole thing like that I don't know. I, I feel like yeah, there's we some... Post, we haven't posted all of the things that you can find in there because I keep being like, use the app, but I don't want to give it all away. You know, I, it's supposed to be something fun and special. Um, John had a box set that he, that um, that had a button on it, and when you put like it was like a box set of records. RNS4. It was an, yeah RNS four, and you would press a button, and it would say this like really like cosmic message about going into the future. And I was like, that's the I just wanted to always like put that record on and <laughs> press the button. It was like so I wanted to have that it, somebody to have that same feeling about the records on our label as well. Um, I know that in one of our discussions, Chaos Magic was mentioned, which is cool because that's actually an inspiration behind my label as well. That's cool. why it's called Chaos Clan, awesome. in part, and also because raves are chaos and <laughs> music is chaos. But um, yeah, I was wondering, you know, we've sort of danced around it, but are there any kind of ideas about infinity or like mysticism or spiritual ideas that or cosmic you know, philosophical ideas that kind of somehow dance with the Ever Records label? Hmm, I think you better answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think too heady a question for it's definitely, noon it's, on a... <laughs> it's definitely a there. Tuesday, it's just I Thursday. feel like hard to quantify. Like, there's nothing specific, I guess, but we are both um, spiritual people and metaphysically. We both believe in magic. Yeah, we both believe in magic. That's in our Venn diagram. Um, and the infinite. Uh, just not 100% sure how to quantify specifically. I feel like you're good. Good answer. Good, good answer. answer. Okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, I it's think. It's there. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, I'm asking because it feels like it's there. But, yeah. you know. It's uh, there. Like, I, I like, woo -woo. It's hard to talk about. Yeah. It's just feeling, trying to feel it rather than yeah. talk about it. But believing, believing in feeling and believing in energy and believing in um, 
the things that you cannot see necessarily and feel and quantify, that's super important and central to what we're doing. Um, and central even in like what we were discussing about how, how we select music, you know, it was like, we're really just looking for a feeling and looking for uh, tapping into something that's like beyond what's right there in front of you, which is the same kind of idea for the genre list kind of thing. Yeah, and be, believing in things that you can't see, like to me it seems essential to, to feeling music and making music because music is invisible. So it, we think of it as a normal thing because it's so readily available that anybody can make music now in any number of ways. But um, the reason music carries so much magic with it is that is that we're really playing games with the invisible and there's no real logical reason why that's possible for human beings to do that or anything like that. The whole fact that it that that's an option for us is really nobody knows where music comes from. Nobody knows like why why the laws of um, why the laws of the universe somehow all com combine to make it possible for music to have this effect on our emotions, for it to be possible for us to organize sound in the way that you do. So the whole thing is, is, is very much magic and we remember that all the time. We don't take it for granted. Music to us isn't just something that appears on our phone or something. It's something that we really, I, the same magic feeling that I had when I was a little kid playing my first records for the first time and wow, that this whole universe comes out of the speakers when I put this record on. Like, how did, how did that happen? Like, I never heard a sound like that on the sidewalk or on the street, you know what I mean? Like, where, how did they put those sounds together? So, yeah, it's, it, um, so I, that feeling's and never left me. It's just as magical when I put on a record today, you know? Yeah. And there's also definitely something of that inherent in, um, in throwing events because you're, you're essentially like, borrowing the energy of all of the people who come and then f with that energy that that everybody brings to it individually you're kind of like wizarding an ex collective experience that everybody gets to share in but everyone is also a participant in and 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 providing that so like that that's that's a little wizardry magic element as well that we we always remember that that we, we rely on the energy of everyone. Yeah, whatever that thing is yeah. that will make a certain group of people feel the same thing when they're, or more or less the same thing when they're exposed to the same music. It's just a magic thing. It might be, you know, a big concert at the forum or something, or it could be a little, small little rave where 200 yeah. people are feeling the same thing at the same time, you know. One's not more valid than the other, but they're they're all examples of, people sharing some little spark within themselves that music uh, that music sets off that spark and you know who knows what that is it's in us but something put that there <laughs> you know yeah I mean I, I feel like in this era where people are carefully designing things from a marketing perspective and there's so much talk about like algorithm algorithm music and formulas like it's refreshing to also know that you can still feel like you can still tap into the magic and the mystery and people that are like kind of guarding that in a way because I think you can feel you can feel that more than ever in this era of music like you can just tell if like something was just engineered by a formula by an algorithm because it sound it seems flat yeah and like I just you know that's why I wanted to ask about it too and I think you know, you, I couldn't have said it more beautifully myself. So <laughs> we'll leave that there with those comments. I hate to like bring it back down to earth for one second, but just tell us um, what are some of the new releases and forthcoming releases that Ever Records is putting out and what should we look out for? Yeah, definitely. So our, our first vinyl releases uh, was from Lime Wax, uh, and there's actually still a couple copies of that um, available. And our second release was Speed Dealer Moms. Uh, after that was Killborn, and that just came out last Friday. That was it's a really great release. Um, after Killborn is Shasha Kimbo, a Los Angeles-based artist and producer with some amazing remixes on it from Lucy, Liza, and uh, Machine Girl. 
And after that, we have a record from Pete Devnell. After that, we have a record from Wheezy. Pete is a Boston-based uh, jungle producer. And, Weezy and jungle expert. And jungle expert. He runs a blog, Blog to the Old School. If you need knowledge, you can read that blog. It's amazing. And uh, then we have Wheezy and CZ and a really amazing remix record for Wheezy's record that has incredible people. DJ Stingray, VTSS, myself with Cardo Pusher, uh, and uh, Tim Reaper is on that one as well. So oh, God heavy. damn. <laughs> that is a heavy, heavy, heavy lineup. lineup. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. I'm going to soak that all in. If you are in LA, you can see um, Aura play Friday night at a space called Vertex. It's their closing party. It's going to be lit. Um, and definitely follow Eva Records and check out their band camp and also. Saturday night, you can see Vivian oh, at another yeah, warehouse event. I'm going to attempt to tap into the magic and the energy <laughs> of Los Angeles with my friends Bianca Oblivion and AK Sports. We have a warehouse party in downtown LA. Um, um, you can follow warp underscore mode underscore if you want to come and you need party directions. It is definitely really in the cuts. I've, I went there last night. It looks amazing. So, awesome. um, yeah, thank you guys for having me. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. To find thank out you. more. And um, I love what you're doing. Keep going. And we are going to keep going. If you just tune in, this is Vans Channel 66. This is their collaboration with Dub Lab that happens every second and fourth Thursday of the month. And I'm here with Trick Finger and Aura T09 from Ever Records, and we're going to get into a DJ set from Aura right now, in which I guess we can probably expect to hear some of the released and, and unreleased Ever Records um, jams. So get into it, drop us some love in the chat, and um, yeah, and check out the label while we're waiting for this epic sesh to kick off. 